I've been putting off this challenge for years. Playing Call of Duty Zombies without taking any damage is more difficult than you would ever expect. Now Luke, why would you do this? Well that's probably because I consistently do the hardest zombies challenges on YouTube and you enjoy watching me suffer. And it's really been a long time since a challenge truly frustrated me as much as this one has. And just to show off how hard this challenge can really be, let's try it on a variety of games and maps, starting with something you would think is easy, like Black Ops Cold War. We'll go with D-Machine since that's the map with the least number of special enemies to deal with and while the first few rounds go by this is also a good time to define what I consider damage. Basically it's anything caused by a zombie, a boss, or a special enemy so fall damage does not count and if anything else pops up later then I'll mention it then. Anyway I hope you're all doing well let's jump back into D Machine where through the first few rounds it's not all that difficult. Obviously I don't want to risk using my knife since the zombies on here really like to give me a little cheeky slap out of nowhere. Starting on round 5 things start to ramp up a a bit with the zombies moving at slightly faster than fat kid pace and my gallo shotgun is not a guaranteed one shot if I only hit the legs. Round 6 is mostly the same but now I'm running into the issue of gaining enough points to leave the spawn room and open up enough doors to reach all the power switches. I saw this issue coming though and bought a purple gallo off the wall because it will do much more damage than our spawned in one red rarity. But because now I'm poor my best bet was to sit in this little tunnel on round 7 hoping nothing would get too close and I could gather enough points to open more doors. Surprisingly enough, it didn't go horribly wrong. With that, I turned on the power and opened up Pack-a-Punch. My next thought was to maybe try and get a lucky ray gun from the Coffin Dance Easter Egg, so I shot all the orbs and watched these dudes go hard as hell on the dance floor. Quick side note, this was genuinely so funny on launch because it was actually a relevant and timely meme that no one was expecting Cherik to add. Anyway, as a consequence of going into the Coffin Dance, our last zombie on round 7 did the not alive, and when I came back into the regular map, it was a plague hound round. Of course the first one hit me and I realized Cold War was definitely not going to be the play for this challenge. Okay well maybe we can try this on an even easier game like Infinite Warfare and just for the memes let's see how overpowered we can possibly get. So I loaded myself up as much as possible and turned on director's cut for a run on zombies in Spaceland. It's always nice to play this map for videos because even though IW in general got a lot of crap, zombies in Spaceland is just so good and is so different than any other zombie zombies experience. So for the first few rounds like last time, nothing much happened until I was able to fill up my meter and use my pack and heat card to get a double pack punched RVN which is an energy weapon that fires two round bursts. This is probably one of the more lame guns that I could have gotten for this but on the bright side it's not a sniper or a melee weapon which infant warfare has a lot of so at least there's that. I then finished out round three and four when I realized five was going to be the explosive clown round. In my panic I went to turn on the power switch to leave the spawn room and ran as fast as I possibly could to an area I knew the clowns couldn't spawn behind me. There was a close call but I just barely avoided taking damage and when the round ended my cheeks could finally unclench a little bit. Oh by the way if you're joining the video then you know please subscribe I would appreciate it and like the video it really does help more than you can imagine. For the next few rounds I moved to the bottom of the big slides where there's only one spawn point to my side and the rest of the zombies need to funnel in in front of me. This RVN is also doing enough damage that if it you know so much as touches a zombie they'll fall over like old people on stairs. Then on round 8 I moved to another spot with a bit more space and a bit slower spawns plus a door behind me in case I needed to bail out. Probably a good time to mention that as well uh, I'm not bothering to open up the map because setting up everything and turning on the power wouldn't be of really any help whatsoever. Getting to the stage of the game where I could naturally double upgrade and everything would just be so insanely risky and I don't really need perks either since I've already got them so there's just no point in me doing it. One thing I did forget though was the big brute who spawns in on round 10. Only reason I knew he showed up was because the ground started shaking and my heart almost jumped out of my chest. Thank god for double upgraded anything being so good because I was able to take him out without getting my cheeks clapped and continued for more rounds. On round 13 I moved to a different area I thought for some reason wouldn't have spawns behind me but of course it did. Luckily I did notice before the zombie ran up and it was too late and I ran back to my corner like the little coward I am. Round 15 is where things started to get interesting as well because the RVN is no longer one bursting to the chest meaning I need to be more precise and therefore a higher risk of me being bad and missing a few shots leading to getting damaged. I did get an insta kill to end off the round though so that was pretty nice. At the start of 16 I threw a gas grenade because they're really good but it cut off my line of sight down the alleyway and the burst spawned in. By the time I realized this the ground was shaking and it was already too late. His laser beam touched me but that's enough to end the game right there. This challenge is just so brutal because literally just 
just that damage. It just screws me over and uh. And screw it, since we're already suffering, let's make this even harder by showing you what this looks like on one of the hardest zombies maps ever made, Verruckt in World of War. Forgot I made my clan tag toes, but screw it, we ball. Verruckt almost immediately threw us into hot water because on round three, for whatever reason, all the zombies decided to spawn in in just two spots, out in the courtyard and on the other side to spawn through one window. Me and my car 98 were not prepared for this, but luckily a nuke bailed us out for now. Right after this, I decided to open a few doors and hang out in the long hallway with the MP40 since it's safer for now and I don't really want to spend all the points and potentially get Molotovs out of the mystery box. Then with a single zombie left on round 6, it was time to make some changes. Spinning the mystery box gave me a BAR and then a BAR with an attachment that you can't use in zombies at all, so it's basically the same gun. Whenever someone says this game is good from now on, I will bring this up. Like seriously, I have no idea how they decided to make the same gun occupy two mystery box spots. That's the best and worst thing ever. Whatever, I did get rid of one of them anyway for a trench gun because things are about to go from 0 to 100 very, very quickly. This is where zombies begin to do their insanely fast sprinting and almost immediately I very closely avoided getting hit. But with a very well-timed lucky knife after my trench gun didn't fully kill a zombie, I got away. The next zombie almost got me as well, which that really scared me. We did survive though and that's what matters, so I bought some double tap and bouncing betties at the end of the round, but honestly this game is already a foregone conclusion. Starting round 8, I knew those super sprinters were coming for me and sure enough after only a few zombies I took some damage. But now that you guys have seen all those and know how hard they are, let's begin the main event. For the last week, I've been doing attempts at this on and off my Twitch streams and for those in the know, you already know where we're headed. One of the best zombies maps ever made buried. Through all my attempts, I will be completely honest, this challenge completely broke me. So many resets, so many round 1, 3, whatever accidents, and so many hours wasted because of stupidly small mistakes. That's why I'm so mad that I ended the game on round 27 where I was actually flawless thinking I could start up a better one the next day since I didn't have the paralyzer in that 27 game or any of the other stuff that I was going to need. But I just couldn't get another game going after that, so eventually I decided that in order to actually do some level of high rounding, we're going to need to bend the rules a little bit. That's where this challenge turned from a no-hit challenge into a minimum hit challenge. Same as before, but I tried to take as little damage as possible and see if we could reach round 50 while doing it. We on the same page? Good. I start off the game being very careful to leave a zombie on round 1 because there's a lot of stuff to do and I don't want any runners coming to screw it up. We head down the mine shaft, build the Remington wall by for a free thousand points and get started on freeing Leroy from his cage. I still hate the fact they officially named him Arthur in the storyline, it's just the worst. Anyway, once he freed, it's time to withdraw some of the money I saved from avoiding my taxes because we need some big cash for this upgrade. When running through the rest of the bank, I grab the SVU sniper wall by it in order to place it in front of the juggernaut area for later in the game. Next, I use Leroy's crippling alcoholism to my advantage by bribing him with some to knock away the furniture. Next is to grab some more candy and a piece of the sonic resonator. Using these two, I can get Leroy to build that for me and I also did this with the turbine in the courthouse because ideally we're going to get that far to use these effectively. So while he's busy doing all the heavy lifting, I headed upstairs for some speed cola and then headed back down to start spinning the mystery box. Guess day was my lucky day though because on literally the third spin I got the paralyzer which is just so nice after days of bad luck and so many restarts. With that it's time to pack a bunch and yes I do consider the witches taking my points as damage so I needed to clench my cheeks while running through the mansion. Luckily enough they have mostly predictable patterns for where they spawn at. Once I'm through I get to stare into the void near stamina up and head down to upgrade both my guns. I once again have to head through the mansion and there's even less of a threat than last time. Oh and I also bought claymores because they'll be really good as a defensive mechanism later on. From here on out though you better get used to looking at these two walls because we're going to be sitting in the juggernaut corner like it's 2013 and I'm scared shitless of this map for no reason at all. For the next 15 rounds or so absolutely nothing happens because the SVU goes brrrr and zombies really only start pushing towards me one at a time. Then on round 21 I came extremely close to taking damage when after my claymore stash was blown up a zombie straight up walked around my resonator which he should have targeted and came right for me. A lucky shot saved me and this was about the time I decided to put away the sniper that goes brrrr because it's actually kinda poo poo after round 20. In all my attempts I actually tried out the SVU AN94 and LSAT for the strategy and while the SVU does hold up the longest it still has a really long reload time and falls off really hard after 20. I was also absolutely shocked how bad the LSAT was in a solo game because of its mega long reload times. The AN94 
is okay, but it runs out of ammo pretty quickly, actually. It constantly felt like I was playing in slow motion while the zombies were being sped up. Anyway, so from here on out, I am officially committed to not using anything that isn't the paralyzer unless I get super bored. Like I said earlier, most of these attempts were streamed on Twitch because slowly tapping the paralyzer for hours at a time was the gaming equivalent of watching paint dry in an empty room. Seriously, it's such a shame that Buried is a gorgeous map with lots of cool areas and amazing sound design, but your one real viable strategy for high rounds is to sit in an area where you almost see none of that cool map. There's not even any good training strategies besides sitting in front of the saloon, but that's even debatable to call that a good strategy. And because the paralyzer is so nerfed into the ground these days with it not being able to kill a single zombie after round 62-ish, you need to use traps for high rounds. And when using those traps, it's best to sit in the juggernaut corner. It, it honestly is so sad and definitely why I say Barry needs a remaster at some point more than any of the other maps. Everything about it is just too good to be left like this forever. And anyway, these videos are starting to turn into mini retrospectives for some reason. I have no idea if you guys like it, but whatever. While I am here though, let me give you my favorite piece of zombies trivia ever. There's a swinging sign in spawn to show the name of the mine shaft you actually enter. It says Livingstone after one of the lead developers, Peter Livingstone, who used to work at Treyarch, and I bet you've never known that before. Back to the gameplay though, at least we reached round 30 without any damage, so that's a nice personal best. And then suddenly on round 33, I actually got slapped by a crawler created by the paralyzer who somehow slipped by and ended our perfect run. But remember, we're just seeing how few slaps we can take at this point, so we're going to carry on. And after that completely stupid circumstance, I made an effort to be crouched all the time so that the zombies can't just crawl up on me again. Then at the start of round 35, I was trying to be a nice claymore farmer and plant my crops while suddenly I got swarmed. My crops saved me, but just barely, and that was very rude of them. After this, we continued on getting hit apparently three more times between 35 and 40. I'm going to be honest when I say I have no clue where these happen because I, uh, I'll believe me in the past when I say this, but it's been a few days since I played the game and I couldn't find them in my footage. With that said, we start off round 40 having taken damage four times and I'll be updating the number as we go along in the game. My tap tap strategy for the paralyzer was starting to get really old really fast and it wasn't even working all that well anymore. It's just not doing enough damage to kill zombies before they get close without overheating the thing like crazy. And then there's the fact that it also slows down spawns when it's used. At least I think so because anytime a round starts or there's an insta kill, the spawns are really quick, but when using the paralyzer, it slows down to almost a trickle, making the rounds way longer than your dad. Been a while since I did one of those jokes, huh? But anyway, by round 44, it was about the time where the paralyzer was really just annoying me and I could not stand to do the strategy anymore, so it's time to use the traps that we built earlier. Basically, you need a turbine to power the resonator and after about 10 blasts of the zombies, the resonator breaks and I need to fly up to this top floor for a new one. Problem with that is that zombies also spawn up near the building table and it also takes a few seconds for the resonator to actually activate once it's placed down. That's why right after one of the resonators broke, a zombie ran through and gave me a high five to the face for our fifth damage of the game. That's when round 46 began, the turbine just decided it wanted to be a deadbeat dad and not work for a while. Luckily, the zombies got distracted long enough for me to have enough time to use the paralyzer and get out of the juggernaut corner. Now I need to actually train around zombies while throwing grenades at this turbine to hopefully break it and get a new one. Our second grenade was right on the money, meaning I can fly over to the other side, place the turbine, and grab a new resonator to keep on going. On round 47, my turbine was already tapping out at the start of the round like a weenie hut junior, so I decided to head it off and leave the juggernaut corner to hoard up more zombies and throw some grenades. Well, it just so happened that the spawns were completely messed up, and after my first grenade didn't finish the job, I needed to loop back around again. When leaving the saloon area, I got hit two times at the exact same time for the game over on round 47. I'm never doing this challenge again. And I believe that brings our total up to eight times getting hit by round 47. If you want to see me suffer some more, then click the video on screen right now since YouTube thinks that you'll like that a lot. Love you, bye.